And here we are again with a third, third video about a CD-ROM for the C64. And last time I was struggling a little because I made my own PCB to decode the audio on the CD to make it readable over the tape port on the C64. Yeah, and I fucked that up. And um, I still have the stuff here somewhere. Yeah, so this is my failed attempt at recreating the board. <laughs> it's just single-sided, which I thought would be a nice idea. But yeah, you can't saw it because it's all upside down. So that is just for memory purposes. Maybe I will frame one of these just to remind me that I'm an idiot. So we were at the point where you need this board and this CD. This CD contains the games in audio format and uh, a fast loader, which you have to load first. Um, it uses the tape port on the C64. You plug it in, you put your CD player or stuff, CD-ROM. Uh, in my last video, I created this C64 CD-ROM. Um, and I used this board because these didn't work. So now a viewer of the channel pointed out that there is actually something similar to this in that it reads audio files from your phone or it can, no, it doesn't read audio files from your phone. That's bullshit. What it does is you can connect your phone here in a similar board and to the tape port on the other side. And I thought, hey, that should actually work with the CD too, because it's nothing more than just audio files. So I got PCBWay to make me some. Thank you, PCBWay. And here they are. And uh, this is an interesting design because it's two PCBs at once. You have this portion down here, which is really a cartridge, which plugs into your C64. If you build one, it looks like this. And there's um, some head alignment software and some tools. And um, if you use this, you don't even have to press space when the found mm -hmm. appears on the screen if you try to load a game. So that's interesting to test. I haven't done that yet. And the second part is this right here. So you can, you can break this off here at these breaking points. And that is pretty much the same as this year. So I did actually connect a chinch cable directly to the, to the port. You can also use this if you want to use your phone. And I did connect one of these tape connectors from an old data set. And yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same. You can even connect another data set up here if you want to do tape to tape. Yeah, and I tried it. And let me show you. This video is kindly sponsored by PCBWay. Thank you, PCBWay. One other thing you need if you want to use the full CD experience is, of course, you need the CD. And this CD is already available on Internet Archive. I wanted to do a, a rip myself, but it's already available and I put a link in the description below. It's a queue and a bin file and you need image burner on Windows to burn it and you have to select the queue file, burn it to a, to a CD. And uh, yeah, make sure that your CD-ROM can actually read or your CD player can actually read burnt disks because that's pretty much what you need. Okay, so we don't need this anymore because we have the whole package right here plus the bonus cartridge. So this is pretty much off the shelf components. You have um, the ability to put just an EEPROM here. It is a 27C128, 256 or 512. There are three files on the project page which you can download depending on the size of your EEPROM. You need a 74LS double O N or double O. You can add a reset switch here, which makes sense. And that just plugs into your cartridge port. But you don't need this to use this. You can also go and only build the upper part, break it off and have the audio 
encoding, decoding, transforming thing. And for that, you don't need the audio port because you can just solder directly to the board and you can see I have soldered this here. There's uh, the ground is the pin in front here and the audio itself is one of these four connections here. I chose this one and it's just a single chinch connector. On the other side we have a few resistors, 1K, 10K and 100K I think it was, plus a few caps. I didn't have all the caps as through holes. It's through holes normally I just used surface mount because that's what I had. And it's some odd sizes like 30, 33 pico ferret which I didn't have um, and 22 nanofarad is not so so odd and 100 nanofarad. You need a switch or you just go and solder the connection permanently. You have to set it into this mode because I think these the data is inverted on here so you have to this switch um, says if it has to invert or not. You have an LED which you can leave out but it shows you if it works or if it's plugged in and you have this uh, MC14069UBCP or on the original it's a yeah, it's a 4069 which you need and you can just go and buy these 10 for I think 2 euros or stuff like that. Yeah so that is my crude looking board but as you will see it works and that's all that counts. Um, as I said I put all the links in the description so you can now really build your own and download the disk and burn it and have it all and make your own CD-ROM. So let me grab a C64. So here's the C64. We also need a CD player. So I will not use my CD-ROM from last time. We will go and change that in a minute to have this board, this board here inside. But for now we're using the CD player. Here it is, standard Sony CD player or DVD player, the one I had in the first video. Connect this to the back of the CD player and this to the back of the C64. So this is now using this board here and not the other one. Switch on the C64. Okay, disc is in, C64 is here. So this is now without the uh, this cartridge here. So let's try that first. The classic shift run stop. And we start with the CD. And I still have to press space if there's found. So it has to go pretty fast. CD edition, very nice. And you have to press this really quickly. As I said, I didn't test the cartridge if it actually works um, to load this faster. But as you can see, it found this. You might ask, hey, does it also load the games because these load faster? Yes, it does. I will show you in a minute. So let's first load the menu. And here we are. Okay, that's that. Let's stop the CD. And let's go and let's load a game. Uh, Solomon's Key. So it says go to track 13. And that is why you need this control board which I implemented in, the, in my own CD-ROM for the C64. Because you need to see what track to select. Um, there are actually CD-ROMs which have a track display. I didn't find one but there are definitely CD-ROMs and I have one of these where you can select the track so you just have to count which of course works. So the cheap version without the display and all the stuff on top of the um, of the case is just find one with a track selector. So 13 start space. Let's go. Let's see what it does. Should do the fast load thing. And it does. It 
should take about 30 seconds or so. Let's see. Ah, oh, okay, we are ready. Does it work? And it does. Great. So, uh, I, as I said, I'm happy I found that board because I don't have to create it then, which is uh, a much nicer and better board than I could ever come up with. That is that. Okay, so that works. Now let's try the cartridge and let's explore what's on here. And this comes up with the menu, tape 64 combo cartridge. As I said, you have to program this EEPROM, but it's a standard EEPROM which you can program with your TL8662. So what do we have? We have the azimuth head alignment tool for tapes, which is good to check if there's actually audio. So if you don't, uh, so if your, your, your cartridge here, the, the, this part doesn't work, you can use this to just check if there's audio. Let me show you. So there's nothing now. I will start track one. And what you want to see is this black line. That is what you don't want to have. That is if the switch is in the wrong position or if the cable is too long. So let me switch back. Okay, so you want to see lines, pretty much straight lines. So this is perfect. If you see this, all is good. If you see grizzly stuff all over the place, no good. Here we are again. So we have the tape 64 kernel and we have the tape 64 easy loader. I'm not sure what the difference is. We will try that and you can press space to go to Commodore Basic and you have an F3 a utilities menu with turbo tape, disk fast loader, diagnostic 64, joystick tester, sound tester and if you press F you go to C64 Basic. So there's quite some stuff on here and as I said you can get the file you need to burn to the EEPROM um, or program to the EEPROM on the project page which is linked in the description below or somewhere here. Let's press F5. Now we go to basic and now it says Commodore Tape 64 version 2. Now it should be possible not to um, press the space bar and it should do this by itself. So let's try that. Not sure if it actually works. Didn't try that. So track is started. Let's see. It should flash for a millisecond and then go away immediately. Yeah, that was. It just flashed. But it does it load. Flashed again. Ah, okay. Yeah, works. Okay, so if you use F5, you don't have to press space, which is kind of nice. So let's see how, ah oh yeah, the other games didn't need the space bar, so it's just for the first file. Would be interesting to actually burn this loader onto the EEPROM because then you could just select the file and didn't have to load the loader all the time. Uh, maybe I will look into this. I'm not good at 6502 or 10 assembly. So that might be something for uh, for someone else on YouTube to do. As I said, I'm not sure what Tape64 Easy Loader is. Press return to load. Yeah, seems to be the same kind of program. Yeah, these tools are made for loading audio files from your phone, but it's the same with the D DVD or CD player. Yeah, works. So the only thing I have to do now is to just connect in my CD-ROM drive for the C64 the audio cable to this module and that's it. And I have my CD-ROM complete. And I can finally close it up. Still waiting on a DAT 1541 for a reasonable price, or at least the case. Oh, Fist 2 seems to be a longer pro. Huh? Okay, there we are. Fist 2. The legend continues. Okay, I have the CD ROM here, which you might have seen in the last video. It's a 1541 case with a CD ROM inside, and I have soldered my little connection cable which connects to the CD ROM. So we just go and connect this to 
the audio out port on the CD like this and root this out of here. Controls on top and are good to go. Nice. So we have a power cable here and we have the data set cable here. We will just use this now. If you haven't seen this, this is the unit. Let me put this under the C64. Oh, look, we can even put this on top of the C64 here to see what we are doing. Nice. So we have to connect the tape connector like this. So there's no disk here. Let's insert a disk. Switch the C64 on. It's already going. So I will stop this now. Yeah, there's uh, my perfectly good power supply here, which does these interferences. So let's do F5 and let's shift run stop and let's play. Get a proper display here, how long it takes to load. Another flash. Ah, okay, there we go. Yeah, that actually works. Might, may sound surprised, but most of the time stuff doesn't work first time. Okay. Nice. Okay, so that is now the final video in my CD-ROM series. That works. I might try to hack this cartridge to actually include the loader. But I'm not sure about that. So thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe or even share this video if you like it. And uh, not just on YouTube. If you have a blog or something and want to write about it, let me know. Send me a link. I'll be very, very happy if you do so. So um, until next time. Bye bye. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. If you need any PCBs, pre-assembled PCBs or 3D printing, Please use the link in the description below. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.